The summer of 356 BC was not just any summer in Pella, the capital of Macedonia. The heavens, it seemed, conspired to mark the birth of a unique destiny. In the heart of the royal palace, a room was abuzz with anticipation. Servants hurriedly moved to and fro as the air was thick with both tension and excitement. Queen Olympias, a woman of formidable spirit and devout rituals, was in labor. Her every wince echoed with prophecy, and her strength mirrored the fierce legacy she would impart to her son. As the cries of the newborn prince pierced the stillness, it is said that distant events of profound significance occurred simultaneously. The Temple of Artemis, one of the Seven Wonders, was consumed by flames. Some whispered it was because the goddess herself had turned her gaze to Pella to witness the birth of one who would be equated with gods. This child was named Alexander. With each passing day, his vibrant energy, keen eyes absorbing the world, and youthful laughter signified that he was destined not just to be a king, but a legend, forever etched in the annals of time. From the beginning, there were signs that this was no ordinary child. With his birth, the very course of history shifted, and Macedonia braced itself for an era of unparalleled brilliance. Young Alexander grew beneath the colossal shadow of his father, King Philip II. Philip, the Lion of Macedonia, was not just a ruler, but a visionary, expanding territories and transforming the once fragmented kingdom into a formidable empire. In the heart of the royal court, amidst the machinations of diplomacy and power, a young Alexander watched and learned. Every assembly, every debate, every war cry was a page in the living textbook of kingship for the young prince. But it wasn't just statecraft that molded Alexander. The warrior's spirit was kindled early on. By the age of 10, he showcased exceptional skills, once taming a wild horse named Bucephalus, a feat that left seasoned Macedonian veterans in awe. Olympias, his mother, was not just a queen, but a beacon of spiritual and mystical pursuits. Her tales, steeped in divine prophecies and ancestral legacies, became Alexander's bedtime stories. These tales infused in him a sense of destined greatness. Sibling bonds also played their part. Although relations with his sister Cleopatra were amicable, his half-brother Aridaeus evoked a spectrum of emotions ranging from affection to rivalry. These early relationships would serve as a precursor to the complex ties he'd form later in life. Amidst all this, a foundation was being laid. As the royal palace of Pella resonated with tales of conquests and legacies, little did they know that the greatest story was just beginning, with young Alexander at its heart. In the verdant sanctuaries of Miesa, nestled amidst Macedonia's rugged beauty, the world's most renowned academy took root, not for its vastness or its architecture, but because of the two luminous minds that met there. Aristotle, the great philosopher, whose thoughts would echo through millennia, was summoned to the royal court. King Philip, ever the visionary, chose him to educate his son. The decision wasn't just about knowledge, it was about crafting a ruler for the ages. Young Alexander's lessons were not confined to scrolls and words. They spanned disciplines, from politics to philosophy, from arts to astronomy, from the nuances of poetry to the strategies of warfare. The school at Nymphaeum was not just about academic pursuits. Here, amidst the echoes of cascading waterfalls and rustling leaves, deep introspection met worldly knowledge. Alexander was learning to meld the heart's passion with the mind's wisdom. Friendships forged in Mieza also left a profound impact. Ptolemy, Cassander, and Hephaestian young men who would later play pivotal roles in the vast tapestry of Alexander's life were more than just fellow students. They were confidants, reflecting the different facets of Alexander's persona. As the days at Mieza turned to years, a transformation was evident. The boy who entered with a burning curiosity emerged with a flame of wisdom, vision, and ambition. Mieza was not just a school. It was the crucible that shaped the legend. Amidst the marble grandeur of Pella, the epicenter of Macedonian power, the ground shook with unforeseen tremors. The assassination of King Philip II was not just a royal tragedy, 
but the fiery crucible in which a young Alexander would be tested. In this vacuum of power, the court became a stage of political intrigue, maneuvering, and naked ambition. Multiple factions rose, each eyeing the throne, each trying to steer the kingdom towards their vision. Alexander, at just 20, showcased an assertiveness that belied his age. With a blend of strategic genius and sheer audacity, he moved swiftly, consolidating his claim. The young prince understood that his right to rule would be accepted only when his leadership was demonstrated unequivocally. He tackled internal threats head-on, like a seasoned player of the ancient chessboard. The Lincestians, who harbored ambitions of independence, were swiftly pacified. Those of the royal court who doubted his claim met with either political exile or a more permanent silence. Beyond securing his throne, the young king recognized the need to unify his land, spiritually and culturally. He fostered the ancient Panhellenic ideals, presenting himself not just as the king of Macedonia, but as a leader for all Greeks. The culmination of these endeavors was vividly showcased at Corinth. Here, leading city-states acknowledged his supremacy, bestowing upon him the coveted mantle of the hegemon of the Hellenic League. It was clear, the boy had become a king, and this king had a vision far beyond the horizons of Macedonia. As the sun set on this chapter of his life, the vast expanse of the known world beckoned. The throne was secure, his homeland united, and now, the greatest adventure awaited. The tapestry of Alexander's epic had only just begun to unfurl. The appetite of ambition knows no bounds, and for Alexander, the vast, tantalizing Persian Empire represented the ultimate prize. It was not just about territorial conquest, it was a clash of cultures, civilizations, and legacies. The first encounter was at the Granicus River. The scene was set, the Persian satraps waiting, their banners flapping ominously. But Alexander, with his characteristic blend of strategy and audacity, would turn rivers into roads of victory. After Granicus, the gates to Asia Minor swung open, city after city, from Sardis to Miletus to Halicarnassus, felt the unstoppable momentum of the Macedonian wave. But the Persian king, Darius III, was no passive spectator. At Issus, these two titans finally clashed. The battle was fierce, personal. For Darius, it was about preserving an empire. For Alexander, it was about etching his legacy. Despite being outnumbered, Alexander's tactics and the loyalty of his troops turned the tide. The Battle of Issus ended with Darius fleeing, leaving his family at the mercy of the Macedonian king. Yet, in a move that stunned many, Alexander treated them with respect and honor. Egypt was next, and it welcomed Alexander as a liberator from Persian rule. Here he founded the city of Alexandria, a symbol of his vision to blend cultures and knowledge. A visit to the Oracle of Siwa further bolstered his divine aspirations, where it's believed he was confirmed as the son of Zeus. The stage was now set for the ultimate showdown at Gaugamela. It wasn't just a battle, but a cataclysmic event that would decide the fate of an empire. Against overwhelming odds, with the world as his witness, Alexander would attempt to rewrite the course of history. As the dust settled, it was clear that the sun was setting on the Persian Empire. The young Macedonian had not just won territories, he'd captured imaginations. The world was now at his feet, but the journey, as always, was far from over. With the heart of the Persian Empire now pulsing to a Macedonian rhythm, Alexander's ambitions stretched eastward. The vast Indian subcontinent, with its diverse cultures and untamed territories, beckoned him. His first significant encounter in India was with King Porus at the Battle of the Hydaspes. Rain-soaked lands, thunderous elephants, and the sheer resilience of the Indian army presented a challenge unlike any before. Despite the fierce resistance, Alexander's tactical genius shone through. However, the aftermath was different this time. Deeply impressed by Porus's valor, Alexander not only spared him, but also granted him more territories, marking a bond of mutual respect. But the vastness of India, 
and the weariness of continuous campaigns began to take a toll. His army, homesick and exhausted, yearned for a return to their homeland. The indomitable conqueror had finally met his match, not in an enemy, but in the very men who had helped carve his empire. Reluctantly, Alexander agreed to turn back, but the journey home wasn't just a geographical retreat. It marked a shift in his demeanor. The once unyielding warrior now grappled with the challenges of administering a vast, diverse empire. As they traversed through the Gedrosian desert, nature's wrath tested the army's limits. Scorching heat, scarce provisions, and the haunting vastness of the barren lands left a trail of suffering. Returning to Babylon, the heart of his new empire, Alexander's health began to deteriorate. Whispers of treachery, prophecies, and the looming question of succession created an atmosphere thick with tension. By June 323 BCE, the world would witness the end of an era. The man who had never been defeated in battle, the legend who had carved an empire stretching across three continents, would meet his greatest adversary, mortality. In the annals of history, few names shine as brightly as Alexander. Yet, the demise of this luminary led to a void, casting a colossal empire into shadows of uncertainty and intrigue. The immediate aftermath was chaotic. Alexander's sudden death left the vast Macedonian Empire without a clear heir. His only posthumous son, Alexander IV, was too young, and the empire's reigns were too weighty for infant hands. Enter the Diadochi Alexander's trusted generals and companions. But trust is a fragile thing in the corridors of power. They became embroiled in a fierce struggle, each eyeing a piece of the grand Macedonian pie. Ptolemy made Egypt his stronghold, laying the foundation of the famed Ptolemaic dynasty. The great city of Alexandria, Alexander's brainchild, became a beacon of culture, learning and power under Ptolemaic reign, most famously symbolized by the legendary Cleopatra. In the east, Seleucus established the Seleucid Empire, encompassing Persia and parts of modern-day Turkey in the Middle East. These new Hellenistic states became melting pots where Greek and local cultures intertwined, creating a rich tapestry of customs, beliefs, and innovations. But the very vastness that defined Alexander's empire became its Achilles' heel. Over time, it fragmented further. Local dynasties rose, and Hellenistic influences waned. Yet, even in decline, the cultural diffusion set in motion by Alexander persisted. Alexander's legacy is multidimensional, a military genius, a diplomatic visionary, a cultural ambassador, and a figure larger than life. His story is not just of conquests, but of dreams that transcended boundaries. As the sun sets on this tale, one can't help but ponder, what drives a man to chase the horizons? Is it power, legacy, or an insatiable curiosity? Perhaps in Alexander's case, it was all and more. While tales of Alexander's conquests loom large, painting him as an almost mythological figure, it is essential to pierce through the layers of legend to discern the man beneath the crown. Who really was Alexander, beyond the battlefields and the throne? Born to King Philip II and Queen Olympias, the political and spiritual landscapes of his childhood played a pivotal role in shaping his psyche. Olympias, a fervent devotee of Dionysian mysteries, likely introduced the young prince to the enigmatic world of divine rituals and prophecies. Then there's Aristotle, the philosopher extraordinaire. As Alexander's tutor, he instilled in him a love for knowledge, art, and philosophy. Their discussions spanned the cosmos, ethics, politics, and the very nature of existence. Beyond the intellect, Alexander's emotional realm was vast, his bond with his close friend and perhaps confidant, Hephaestion, was profound. Their relationship, immortalized in letters and anecdotes, was a testament to the depth of their connection. The taste of power, though, is complex. As he conquered and encountered diverse civilizations, Alexander exhibited both magnanimity and ruthlessness. His handling of the Persian family post-Issus showed unexpected grace, but events like the raising of Thebes or the execution of Parmenion displayed a sterner, unyielding facet. His immersion into foreign cultures was profound. 
from adopting Persian attire and customs, which often unsettled his Macedonian comrades, to his marriage to Roxana of Bactria. It was clear Alexander wasn't just building an empire of land, but also of cultures. In the end, the essence of Alexander remains an enigma, a mosaic of brilliance and flaws, love and ambition, empathy and ruthlessness. His legacy is not of a god, but of a man who dared to touch the stars, reminding us of the infinite potentials and pitfalls of the human spirit. Few figures from the annals of history leave an indelible mark on the tapestry of human civilization, and Alexander is undeniably among them. But how do his exploits, beliefs, and very essence reverberate through time, influencing centuries that followed? Firstly, we must consider the cities. The numerous Alexandrias founded during his campaigns, especially the Egyptian Alexandria, became epicenters of learning, culture, and trade. These cities, particularly the latter, held the beacon of Hellenistic civilization aloft for centuries. Alexander's journeys opened doors for increased trade between the East and West. The interconnectivity facilitated not only the exchange of goods, but also ideas. This paved the way for the famed Silk Road, the ancient superhighway of commerce and culture. In literature and arts, Alexander's legend found fertile ground. From Greek and Roman accounts to the Persian Iskandarnama and the epics of medieval Europe, the conqueror's life was retold, reimagined, and revered. Strategically, Alexander's military tactics continued to inspire generations of leaders. The use of the phalanx, the integration of various arms of the army, and the emphasis on mobility and surprise became foundational in military academies worldwide. Yet not all echoes of Alexander's legacy were harmonious. His deification and autocratic rule also set precedents for future rulers, laying a template for the divine rights of kings and the centralization of power. Perhaps the most poignant aspect of Alexander's resonance through time is the spirit of exploration and synthesis. His insatiable curiosity, the blending of cultures, and the emphasis on knowledge remind us of the timeless virtues of understanding and unity. As we reflect upon his journey, Alexander emerges not just as a historical figure, but a symbol, a symbol of ambition, curiosity, the wonders and woes of power, and the eternal dance of cultures. The boy from Pella, in his brief time, set forth ripples that still touch our shores, making us ponder the nature of legacy and the threads that connect us to our past. Every great saga must conclude, and yet, the end of Alexander's story remains shrouded in questions, speculations, and mystery. The conqueror who seemed invincible in battle met a sudden end in Babylon, leading to centuries of debates and theories. Alexander's demise at a mere 32 shocked the ancient world. The primary sources penned by historians like Arian, Plutarch, and Diodorus offer varying accounts, further fueling the intrigue. The most straightforward explanation, though perhaps less dramatic, is natural causes. Malaria and typhoid have been suggested, given the symptoms described. Fever, chills, and immense fatigue. Another prevalent theory, poison. Alexander had made his fair share of enemies, even within his close circle. However, the slow progression of his illness, spanning days, seems inconsistent with poisoning, given the rapid-acting poisons of that era. An autoimmune disorder, possibly Guillain-Barre syndrome, has also been theorized. The symptoms, rapid onset of paralysis and eventual respiratory failure, align with some descriptions of Alexander's condition. Recent studies suggest an intriguing possibility, an acute pancreatitis due to excessive alcohol consumption. While the drinking habits of the Macedonian nobility were legendary, it would be poetic irony if the very elixirs celebrated in victory became the agents of the conqueror's demise. Beyond the physical, some believe Alexander's mental and emotional turmoil could have hastened his end. The burdens of ruling a vast empire, reconciling diverse cultures, and managing internal dissent might have taken a toll on the young king's psyche. Following his death, a wave of grief swept the empire. It wasn't just the passing of a king, but the end of an era. The titan of antiquity was immortalized, not in stone or scrolls, 
but in the collective consciousness of generations to come. While the exact cause of his death remains an enigma, Alexander's legacy is unequivocal. His life, a brilliant comet that graced the skies of history, continues to inspire awe, debate, and wonder. In death, as in life, Alexander the Great remains unparalleled and unforgettable. In the aftermath of a mighty empire builder's passing, the colossal edifice they erected often faces a power vacuum. And so it was with Alexander. The question on everyone's lips was clear. Who would inherit the vast realms stretching from Greece to India? Alexander, on his deathbed, allegedly left his empire to the strongest or perhaps to the best, a declaration that paved the way for decades of strife known as the Wars of the Diadochi. Key figures emerged in this power struggle. There was Perdiccas, Alexander's loyal regent, who initially tried to hold the vast territories together. And Antigonus Monophthalmus, the One-Eyed, with ambitions as vast as the empire itself. Cassander, son of Antipater, had his eyes set on Macedonia and Greece. Ptolemy, astute and cunning, took Egypt, turning it into a Hellenistic powerhouse and establishing the famous Ptolemaic dynasty, which would last until Cleopatra. Seleucus, another of Alexander's generals, carved out a realm spanning from modern-day Turkey to India, ushering in the Seleucid Empire. His dominions would touch the Maurya Empire in India, leading to a blend of cultures and the famous alliance with the Mauryan king, Chandragupta. As these generals, the Diadochi, battled, the empire's unity fractured. The once unified realm splintered into numerous Hellenistic kingdoms, each leaving its own indelible mark on history. While the political landscape fragmented, the cultural and intellectual legacies of the Hellenistic era flourished. The Museum and Library of Alexandria became the epicenter of knowledge, drawing scholars, scientists, and artists. This era gave us great minds like Archimedes, Euclid, and Eratosthenes. In time, the Diadochi dynasties would face their own challenges, from internal strife to external threats like the rising power of Rome. Yet despite their eventual decline, they cemented Hellenistic influence in art, science, and governance across three continents. Alexander's direct rule was brief, but the ripple effects of his conquests, carried forward by his successors, sculpted the ancient world's trajectory. From the Mediterranean to the Indus, the fusion of cultures, the cross-pollination of ideas, and the shared dreams of that era continue to echo in the annals of time. And there we have it, the mesmerizing journey of Alexander the Great, a man whose legacy continues to captivate us millennia later. If you enjoyed diving into history with us, and would like to embark on more adventures through time, please give this video a thumbs up. Remember to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our future explorations. Thank you for being a part of our history-loving community. Until next time, keep questioning, keep learning, and always stay curious.